Kiara, time for your Bachelorette New Zealand recap. I'm Mama C. Last time, Lucina had a date with McDreamy, Lily had a date with Terrence, and we rejoined them in progress. Terrence was opening up about dealing with depression. He says so. He doesn't want to be treated differently, and he's afraid of opening up and getting hurt. And that's fair enough. That's a very illogical fear. He's learning more about himself through this experience, as I think all the lads are learning a lot about themselves throughout this day. Uh, Lily was really great throughout this. I thought that she was uh, supportive uh, and made him feel comfortable enough to share, and I think that was good on her part. Uh, so I think that, you know, she felt good about him sharing. They talked deeper feelings, possible futures, and she offers him a well-deserved rose. Yeah, and he accepts, of course, because he's no fool. Uh, the boys then, back at the place, they do a gratitude circle. Just talk about what they're grateful for. Then they go eat massive amounts of carbs, because uh, I guess... I suppose because that's all they do is they eat and work out and stress, I suppose. Uh, McDreamy, then he returns with his rose and says Terrence isn't returning tonight. So they go to ad break. So during this time, I'm like, either they're playing a joke or they're going to do an overnight date, you know, because he opened up and shared. Mm, I don't know. But then they come back. From the commercial break, and uh, Terrence comes running in, and they all have a laugh. Oh. The boys, they're all stressing about their positions in the house. They have a challenge presented to them, synchronized swimming. Oh, no, no, don't run off just yet. It ends up being quite hilarious, and, uh, you know, it was a good time. Uh, Aaron, he's feeling disappointed for not getting to spend time with Lucina. He's not thrilled to do the challenge, but if that's what he must do to get time with her, then that's what he's got to do. The boys are broken up into groups for their routines. They do their routines. Jesse, Aaron, and Liam are up first. Lucina gives them an 8. Lily a 9. Quinn gives a 7.5 because he is also judging because he is unable to participate because of his, the cut in his hand. Hmm. Team 2 is Mike, Terrence, and Richie. Lucina gives them an 8.5. Lily an 8. And Quinn a 9. Team 3 is Michael, Logan, and Elliot. And it's tens across the board. Uh, Michael, he was naked, and I mean, it was funny, because it wasn't like he was trying to be sexy naked, it was funny naked, like, there was a lot of jumping in their, in their routine. So yeah, Michael's little Kumra was just a bouncing around. So anyway, that was funny, though. Oh my god, it was funny. <laughs> so they all had a good laugh, I eh? So, Lucina, then she uh, picks Michael for her one-on-one. -on -one. Elliot, he got a one-on-one -on -one with Lily. Um, oh, Quinn chose Logan, you know, so he didn't feel left out. So, they went off and had a little chat. <laughs> I thought that was kind of cute. Uh, Elliot and Lily, they go off for their chat. She asks, you know, what's, what's he into? He says, well, maybe sports psychology. You know, he loves coaching. That's what he's passionate about. Lily says, uh, you know, she'll probably do a hundred things before she dies, you know, because she just wants to experience, like, everything. Um, and she says, what does he want a partner? He says he wants someone to laugh with. Lily tells him that, you know, she hates drama. She hates when people walk away from her. Uh, he said, when he looked into her eyes, he said he could tell that she was someone that he could trust. Hmm. She's glad he's opening up a little and says, you'll really get to know me when we go on a full-on date. Yeah, well played, Elliot, well played. And he's right, you know, it's more than just five, ten minutes, eh? You know, he needs a whole day. So, good on him for saying that. Hmm. Uh, Michael and Lucina, they go off for their one-on-one, -on -one and uh, they have a good chat, they have fun. He says he's quite spontaneous. He asks her what is, uh, he asks her what is different about her, like what would she say is different about her, or something, you know, maybe he would know. She admits to him that she was really into Dungeons and Dragons when she was at uni, I guess. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, that's something different. Uh, she even joined a group. However, apparently the group kicked her out, she says, because she wasn't cool enough for them. I bet they're kicking themselves now, though, honey. <laughs> Uh, she says uh, she's usually been the dominant one in a relationship. Uh, Michael says he's a dominant guy and he has been in management uh, and sort of ended up in leadership roles for like uh, about the last seven years, I think it was. Uh, they talk about relationships, fighting, you know, that sort of thing. Lucina offers Michael a rose and uh, she says he's surprising and has many layers and he accepts. 
Logan and Aaron fret as they are the last two of Lucina's guys who do not have roses. So, you know, they feel like one of them is in danger of going home tonight. Mmm. The lads prep for the cocktail party. You know, Mark has his rose. Michael has his. Aaron admits to being jealous. Well, they join some of the lads. They chat about Michael and how he's coming out of his shell. They laugh about his nudity and the synchronized swimming. You know, it was a good laugh, eh? Elliot hopes for a one-on-one -on -one date soon. They all say they're feeling good, but Aaron is still stressing. Lucina shows up to the group. She asks about Steve leaving and how it affected them. Aaron talks about his then past. Like he's, it's like he's trying to open up a bit, I think, here. Um, and he talks about past, losing friends, you know, that sort of thing. He's obviously worried about his relationship. We see in a side of Lucina saying she worries about Aaron and the tension in the house. But to be fair, not that big a deal. Because any tension was just stupidity stuff, like, rare, you know, oh, well, you overheard this, and then you said that, and da-da-da. And I mean, it was nothing earth-shattering, so it's not like character assassination, nothing, nothing, nothing that big a deal. But remember, they've got to have something to try to make it sound like it is a big deal, because they got to have something to latch on to, because, like, right now, it's... Just to keep us interested, I mean, they got to try to do something, even though it's like kind of like they're insulting our intelligence a lot, but, I mean, I don't know. That's just how they're rolling, I guess. I don't know. I don't like that it's like either one or the other, the kind of that kind of thing. I don't care for that, but I don't know. I'm not the one who's doing the show, so I don't know. <laughs> but it's just, I wish they'd stop like with this backbiting kind of stuff. I don't know. So then Lucina, she gets up and she moves on to the next group to have a chat. Uh, Lucina asks the, the next group, you know, what they've said that might be the most cringeworthy about the girls, you know, maybe behind their backs. Logan, of course, he jokingly says, well, he usually ends up saying it to her face, you know, because the poor guy, he's a bit awkward, much like myself. So <laughs> I can't help but notice that the girls at this point, you know, I just, I've seen this a few other times. It looks almost like their teeth are blue because like they've obviously had them whitened and there's like practically glowing blue depending on the light they're in yeah I don't know I'll have to try to catch some photos of it or see what I can do but it's weird because you can tell they've obviously had some glow light or something you know because obviously they're getting their teeth whitened and stuff for TV but I don't know it's just it was almost off-putting because they're so... I remember, like, this has been, I don't know, if it was a week or two ago or whatever, but at one point, Lily's teeth looked so blue. I thought she'd been, like, drinking, like, a blue slushy or something. Seriously, that's how blue they looked at one point. I don't know if it was lighting or what. But, yeah, it's sort of off-putting, so... It's just an aside. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of weird, but, yeah. But depending on the lighting, um, their teeth are starting to look blue. So, I don't know what's up with that. Uh, so Lily then asks Richie to come away for a chat. They have a good chat, and just when things start to heat up, they knock over a drink, which is something they do because every time they end their date on something awkward. So they have a laugh about it, and they still do some more kissing, so that was all right. The other lads speculate about who is going to go home. Aaron frets, and the voiceover foreshadows more problems ahead. Uh, Liam is having a blast mucking about. He says, if you don't have a rose, and you shouldn't feel confident. Aaron says he isn't 100% confident. Yeah, we know, buddy. We know how much you're stressing. Logan seeks out Lucina for a chat. He gives her a wink and a compliment. He says he has a crazy side, and he tells her a story about parasailing uh, when he was in, I uh, went overseas. Da 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 da. Lucina says, you know, that isn't really that crazy. Um, you know, but he admits he hates flying and heights and, and all that. It does seem to fall a bit flat because, I mean, yeah, he goes out and does adventurous things on holiday. And she says it's not that big a deal, but, you know, it was kind of cute that he thought that it was sort of wild in that. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> all right, so Jesse and Lily, they have a walk and a chat. Uh, Lily says she trusts Jesse and doesn't fear telling him how she feels. Uh, he feels positive and chuffed. Uh, Jesse returns and says he feels safe. Aaron continues to stress out. 
Mm. The boys question Aaron's quietness, then Liam brings up Steve, pokes the bear a bit, because that's what he does best. Uh, Aaron gets up and leaves. Aaron says, Liam is fake and bullshitting. He isn't buying what Liam is selling, and he says, Liam told Jesse he has a girl back home who just thinks he's on vacation in Hawaii. Alright, so then, voiceover comes back, talks about trouble brewing, they show us Aaron whispering to Jesse that stuff is about to go down, and he is going to have a chat with Lily. So Aaron takes Lily for a chat. Meanwhile, Jesse wonders what Aaron is up to. He says it's something juicy. Uh, Liam says Aaron puts his foot in his mouth all the time, but um, so does he. So, I mean, and somebody in the background said, don't we all? And yeah, you all do. You all do. So... I don't know why he was acting like he was above it. So, yeah, they all put their foot in their mouth all the time. Mm. Anyway, Aaron tells Lily about Liam's girlfriend back home. Aaron's freaking out a bit, but Lily's appreciative of Aaron coming to her. He says he feels like a dick because, you know, he doesn't even know for sure if it's true. And, um, you know, so he's like, you know, just to clarify, he doesn't know that it's true. But Lily says thanks to him, and even though they don't know if it is true, uh, she says things like this don't just come up for no reason. I mean, there's got to be some truth to it sort of thing. And she said if he hadn't told her that he would have been a dick. So she's appreciative of all this info, and she says she'll get to the bottom of it herself, and that's fair enough. Um, but then the voiceover comes back on and proceeds to throw Aaron under the bus, which kind of pissed me off a bit, because it's like, even when, after Lily said he did the right thing, saying, so like saying it's because he was stressing about going home and being insecure, and I mean, that just kind of ticked me off, because like, at the end of the day, she said she was appreciative of him telling, because none of the other boys were going to do it. Why? Because of the bro code. That's why. So I say good on Erin for freaking telling her so that she can deal with it herself. And he even said he didn't know if it was true. So I don't know why everybody starts to stress about it. Oh, but it's going to get worse because I think it's by the end of this episode, poor Erin is going to have a nervous breakdown. Holy cow. It's just some crazy stuff. <laughs> I guess as a, as a little bit there, they mock Liam a bit. Uh, the voiceover person mocks Liam a bit, wondering if he'll be able to speak. You know, they show clips of him stammering in the past. I don't know. They're awful bull. They're trying to make fun of these guys. I, I don't think that sits well, but, you know, whatever makes them happy, I suppose. Uh, Lily asks Liam for a chat. Dun, dun, dum. Yeah, she asks him how he's feeling. He says, oh, great view, da, da, da. But then down to brass text. She then talks to Liam and asks him about the girl. Mm -hmm. He's surprised. I mean, he is like stunned mullet surprised. Because I think he just didn't expect anybody to narc on him. Right? I mean, he didn't expect that because of the bro code and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, he's obviously you can see the mind is turning. He's trying to figure out what to say. He's like, oh, wow, that's pretty heavy. And then, of course, they go to ad break, as they do. So then when they come back from the ad break, uh, he's like, yeah, so, like, what I said was, like, a hundred, I was 100% single, man, you know, and then, I don't know, he says he told Jesse that when he thought, he told him that when he thought that he was going to be eliminated, uh, don't worry, mate, I got somebody back home, you know, that sort of thing, but he says he tried to make it out more because of the boys, mm, I'm not really sure I buy it either. Meanwhile, Aaron is freaking out, continues to stress. Terrence tries to give him some reassurance, but he's just, this poor guy, he's got anxiety, some fears. Uh, Liam says uh, it was all blown out of proportion. He then scrambles and says he hasn't been able to tell that person, um, you know, ended or whatever. Lily says, so you ghosted someone? He says, I know it sounds like that. Yeah, it does. Uh, she then tells her doubts. He then says it wasn't anything. He says he wasn't even actively pursuing it. And she says, well, then why didn't you shut it down beforehand? Right? Uh, cause Lily's troubled by this, right? She says, you recognize what you did and you obviously now it was wrong. Liam says it was stupid just to tell someone. Not that he did it, but it was stupid that he told someone. And that is, that is such a guy thing. Oh my God, that's such a guy thing. 
He's not sorry for the action. He's sorry he told someone. And that's what, right there, my hackles went right up there. Because when you, I mean, that's not even an apology. I'm sorry I told someone. Not even an apology. Um, you know, he should have told her when they talked before. Because she's like, you know, we were being open and honest. You know, you should have just told me. And she's right. He should have just said it. It would probably have been easier to deal with if, you know, he had done it head on and they had discussed it. But it was all this, like, shady kind of stuff. Yeah. And, you know, she, then she says, um, you know, it's, I don't think you're a bad person. And she says, you know, this is more about her now. Because, obviously, you know, it's not about Liam finding his love. It's about her. So, she's like, you know, this is more about me now. And it's not that she thinks he's a bad person or anything like that. But she says, I think it's time you should go back to the real world. Hmm. He says, the other day we talked, you know, I was serious. And she's like, I just think it's best if you go, right? Mm. So then Liam tells us that he was prepared to open up, but, you know, she's made up her mind. He struggles with what to feel about it. You know, he's angry and hurt, which is to be expected. Um, he then tries to tell us it wasn't true after admitting to Lily that it was. Now, this is confusing. So confusing. Oh, my God. So then Liam returns to the lads and goes to them and says, you know, he's been vetoed, he's leaving, he says he said something he shouldn't have. Again, not the action, but sorry that he said what he said. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so then Aaron says, well, is it true? And then Liam says, no. What? He says that he tried to make it more than what it was to the boys, you know, that whole thing his reason, reasons for saying that about a girl. He then starts to say goodbyes, and Aaron says he's sorry, and he says he told that he, you know, he's the one who told Lily. Well, Liam asks why, and Aaron says, I don't effing know. And neither do I. Why didn't he just leave it go? Why didn't he just... The point was, it needed to be discussed. It doesn't matter who told her, because it was true. He should have dealt with it from that get-go. Why Aaron is doing this to himself, I don't know. It's just ridiculous. Ugh. So, I imagine that even though poor Aaron did the right thing by telling Lily, she's confirmed he did the right thing because he even said he didn't know if it was true. But now he's going to overthink this again because he's in this house and it's the whole anxiety level and I don't know. He needs something. I don't know. I feel like... I'm just, I'm, I'm starting to feel worried about some of these guys because I don't think that this isolation is really that good for them. Yeah, I just, especially poor Aaron, I just feel like he's sort of having a meltdown and I don't know what's happening in the background, who's getting in his head, I honestly don't know. Or if he's just in his own head, maybe he's doing this to himself, not really sure. Hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, he did the right thing by talking to Lily. And now they're going to make him the bad guy, even though Liam admitted to Lily about the girl back home. So it's like, can we just hear one story? Liam, can you just tell us one story? Like, you admit to Lily, but then you're like, no, it's not true. This is just, it's probably good that he leaves. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I didn't see him with Lily anyway. And I'm Team Quinn. I mean, I like Richie too, but... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I just, mm, I never saw her with him anyway, so I think at the end of the day, he should just probably go anyway. And he's been told to go, so there you go. At the end of the day, yeah, as long as Quinn stays, I'm happy. <laughs> I mean, for that's for Lily. As for Lucina, you know, I still favor, um, I still favor Aaron and McDreamy. I like the two of them. And I'm not dissing any of the other guys either. I like them all just fine. Um, I just, that's who I think seems to be so far, what it looks like to me, what I've seen, which, you know, I don't see everything, but, you know, it just seems to me that's the best matches for each of the ladies from what I've seen as far as their dates. Yeah. Okay. Next time, we'll promise that it's going to hit the fan, and I imagine they're probably going to villainize Aaron like they did with Elliot when he first returned, and that's because of the situation they're in, you know, it's sort of this weird trapped thing. Yeah. Lily is going to give them the message that if they have anything that they need to say, now is the time. She's not an idiot. Don't play me, is what she says. So join us again tomorrow for the next Bachelorette New Zealand recap by Mama C. Have a great day, wherever you are. <laughs>